Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashia and in this video I'm going to explore the essential hardware that you need for your music production setup. I'm going to make two groups, um, one group for beginners and one group for intermediate producers. Uh, it doesn't matter which group you are, um, if you're starting to uh, make a setup, uh, make sure to watch until the end of this video and yeah, let's dive into it. So it doesn't matter um, if you're a beginner, a pro or an intermediate, if you're producing music, you need a computer or a laptop. And um, I get it that as a, especially as a beginner, you're aiming for affordability. Um, but one thing that you want to keep in mind is um, processing power, also RAM. I would say for RAM, go for anything uh, above 8 gigabytes. I would suggest 16 gigabytes, but um, if you're going for affor affordability, um, definitely go for at least 8 gigabytes, 8 gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> Next up is an audio interface. So, audio interface. So next up is an audio interface. An audio interface is, hello, how you doing? Oh. <laughs> so an audio interface is what you use to connect your mic. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> what the fuck? As a beginner, you don't really need an expensive uh, audio interface. All you need is something that gives you the option to just plug in your uh, input and start recording. And for that, um, I would say go for anything with two inputs and um, two outputs. A good suggestion for that is going to be um, the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 or 2i4. So if you want to go for something really cheap, um, you could go for the Steinberg UR12 um, USB audio interface. This audio interface is $140, but have in mind that uh, it only gives you RCA output. So later on, if you want to connect it to your uh, speakers, it's going to give you an unbalanced output, uh, which professionally, that's not something that you want. And also the cheapest option only gives you one XLR input and one um, instrument input. Another budget interface that I can um, recommend is the Steinberg UR22. This interface is actually one of my favorites because the preamp in this interface is just fabulous for the price. It's a little bit more expensive than the 2i2. It's around $400, but it's a decent interface. I wouldn't say it's the best uh, value that you can get for your money. For uh, $400, you, you might be able to get something better, but um, it's just a good interface and I just wanted to mention the name just in case um, you're a fan of Steinberg stuff and you want to go for that. So next up is headphones or studio monitors. As a beginner, I wouldn't suggest you to get a studio monitor day one unless you want to start learning mixing um, from the beginning, which isn't the case for most people. Most people just want to um, start uh, making music and then they get into mixing. I would suggest you get a decent pair of headphones and then um, after a while you can definitely just invest in uh, getting a decent uh, pair of studio monitors as well. So we have two different types of headphones that you can get. One is open back and the other one is closed back. So what are the difference? The open back headphones allow air to pass uh, through their ear cups uh, from the rear end of the speaker driver. So for that reason you'll be able to hear what you're hearing brighter and more clearly. But at the same time, you'll be able to hear outside noise as well. So if you live in a place that you don't have a dedicated space for your music creation and you don't have a quiet space, it could be kind of annoying to work with open back headphones because you'll be able to hear everything outside. And also another con of having open back headphones is uh, you'll have a lot of leakage, especially when you're recording. You don't wanna you don't wanna hear the actual song that's playing through the headphones. If you're planning to record your voice, your vocals, or your acoustic instruments like an acoustic guitar or anything else, I wouldn't go with um, an open back headphone. 
a closed back headphone is probably a better choice for you. So I'm going to give you two options for closed back headphones uh, and they're almost in the same price range and I wouldn't go uh, for anything cheaper than that, especially if you want to get into mixing. The first one, which is uh, a little bit cheaper, is, is the Audio-Technica ATH-M50X Professional Headphones. I'm, I was just reading it from the text. These are not what I use, but uh, from my experience, they really sound good, uh, especially for the price, they sound decent enough. But personally, I think a better choice would be the Bayer Dynamics 770 Pro. Even though they're closed back, I use them for everything. I use them for mixing, I use them for recording. They're not super bassy, they're, uh, I think, neutral enough uh, so that you can use them for mixing. Uh, they're not optimal for mixing. I've seen so many people use them for that purpose, but uh, I think they're just good sounding headphones. And uh, these are $230, I believe, and the Audio Technica ones that I mentioned, they are $220. And, uh, and for open back headphones, I would say go for the brother of this headphone which is the DT900 which is the Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pro also later on in this video in the intermediate section I'm gonna talk about studio monitors so if you wanna um, upgrade your setup and get a, get studio monitors um, just uh, wait a few minutes until we reach that point next up is a MIDI controller a MIDI controller is, a MIDI controller is just a fascinating piece of gear it's how you talk to your software, to your DAW. By using a MIDI controller, you're talking to your DAW. Uh, by using a MIDI controller, you can play any instruments that you want. It just makes your life so much easier. If you're on a budget, uh, the go-to MIDI controller for beginners is this guy. This is a decent uh, controller. Gives you 25 keys, gives you pads, gives you knobs. And um, and for the price, it's just great. And um, especially if you travel a lot and uh, you wanna and you wanna make music on the go, you could just put this thing in your backpack and then just take it out, connect it to your computer, and boom, you're just ready to go. But if you're looking for something that gives you more keys, and um, you actually wanna play it like a piano, I would go for the M Audio Keystation 61. Got mine uh, second-handed for fifty dollars. But brand new, it's uh, two hundred and fifty dollars. So if you go on hunting for it, you could definitely uh, find some good deals. And also, this model has um, an eighty-eight key as well, which is uh, three hundred and seventy-eight dollars. But honestly, for a MIDI controller, eighty-eight keys is just uh, too much. And I'm a keyboard, I'm a piano player, and I'm saying that. So I don't think you need uh, eighty-eight keys, especially as a beginner. As a beginner. This is all you need, especially if you don't know how to play keyboard. This is what you need. This is um, all you need. You can just play any kind of melody that you want on this. And also, if you want to go higher on lower in octaves, it gives you the option to do that with these buttons. And also, the M Audio uh, MIDI keyboard does the same thing. If you want to go lower or higher in octaves, you could you could definitely do that. Now let's say it's been a couple years since you started producing music and um, you actually know your music, you know your style, you got some connections and you want to invest in yourself. It really depends on you and your journey, but um, for most people, uh, for most people, the first thing that they want to upgrade is their computer, especially if you got something cheap in the beginning with, for example, just eight gigabytes of RAM, definitely invest in getting something uh, more powerful and I'm not I'm not gonna give any recommendations for um, computers because that's not really my expertise but you could go online and uh, just find so many good options um, in a few minutes of searching another upgrade that you can make is getting a better audio interface so many beginners think that uh, when you pay for a better audio interface you're paying for the number of inputs and outputs on that interface but you're actually paying for the preamp and sometimes the processor that comes in that interface. If budget is not an issue for you anymore, investing in getting um, one of the universal audio interfaces is, um, is a smart decision because, because it comes with a good preamp inside the uh, interface. So as an intermediate, you don't need to uh, go and buy a separate preamp for your recordings. 
if you have a decent audio interface. A good suggestion is the Apollo Twin. It's that's what I have, and um, I'm planning to upgrade uh, whenever I can. Mine is getting a little outdated, uh, but the new ones. But you can get a brand new one as cheap as uh, nine hundred dollars, and the return on value that you can uh, get on these things is just crazy good. So another must for upgrading as a music producer and as a mixing engineer is getting a decent pair of studio monitors. There are so many options out there uh, for, for getting studio monitors as well. But um, if you're want if you just getting into it and you don't wanna go crazy, um, and if you don't have a huge space, um, I would go with um, Yamaha HS5 studio monitors. I think you can get them as cheap as 250 or $260. I got mine second handed for 200 and I will admit that they're not the best sounding but uh, for the but for the price they're good enough. If you have a bigger space I would definitely go for an um, 8 inch instead of a 5 inch. Uh, you could go for um, Yamaha HS8 instead of HS5 if you have the space for it. I'll record a video later um, about a guide on how to uh, choose what type of studio monitors you should get depending on the room and the space that you have. But for now, uh, a couple of good options are the HS5, HS8, microphones, microphone, microphone, microphone. So there are so many microphones that you can get. Um, and each one of those microphones has uh, different purposes. So I won't go into detail about uh, what each type of microphone does. And uh, again, I'll have I'll have uh, videos later on um, on microphones as well, but I'm just going to give you some examples uh, of some good microphones that um, are really uh, popular. A good budget mic that you can get uh, for just a hundred bucks is the Audio Technica AT2020. I have personally used this mic, and it and for the price, it sounds great. I've used it for recording vocals, guitars, and it just sounds fine. You know, um, you're not. You're not paying a lot of money, so don't expect to get the best sounding mic. It's great for the price, so if you are on a budget, definitely go for this mic. If you want to go for something uh, a little more expensive, another good mic that uh, you've probably seen a lot of people like YouTubers and um, people who do podcasts uh, use a lot uh, is the Shure SM7B. Uh, now, this mic is generally used for vocals. I've, I haven't seen I haven't really seen people use it to um, record um, instruments, but it's a good sounding mic. And if you know what you're doing, you could use it to record anything. You could use any mic to record anything, actually, if you know what you're doing. But for the price, which is uh, $540, I think you'll get a, I think you're getting a good return on value. Another, another mic that um, is my personal favorite is the TLM103. Uh, it's around fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, this it sounds just fine. I never um, process my sounds uh, for my videos because this microphone just sounds fine. And uh, and I've seen many people uh, hate this microphone, uh, which I get their point. I'll talk about it in uh, my l later videos. But I think um, if you have the budget and if you can go for a more expensive mic, go for a go for a Newman mic. I'll get more into details about um, all these gears later, especially with uh, mics and studio monitors because that's my favorite um, topic. But yeah, thanks for watching. Please like this video, please subscribe, and if you have any suggestions, please uh, let me know in the comment section and tell me if you like this video. And also tell me if you want me to make any videos on any specific topics. And yeah, uh, once again, thank you and see you in the next one.